So this video is going to serve as a uh, introduction to T cell mediated immunity. Let's review where we've uh, covered what we've covered so far. So in the immune system, we have a lot of uh, layers of defense. Uh, initially, we talked about the physical and chemical barriers to infection. If you could stop pathogens from invading your body, uh, you wouldn't need an immune system. So the barriers are good. The physical barriers, the chemical barriers are good, but they're very imperfect. So pathogens usually pass those barriers, uh, at which point they will activate the innate immune defenses. Those are the first line of defenses that activate fairly quickly. Things like complement, phagocytes, including macrophages and neutrophils, natural killer cells, and the processes of inflammation. These are great. These will start to try to attack and clear the pathogen, stop it from reproducing, uh, but these are not perfect defenses. But they will activate and they will do their best. Uh, while they're activating, we adapt, we uh, activate the adaptive immune defenses. Now, these take a much more, much longer to activate, but they work very, very well. There are two branches of the adaptive immune defenses. There's humoral immunity. So while the innate immune system is trying to clear the infection, B cells are using their B cell receptors to try to engage pathogens. And if they do, they will be secreting antibodies. Uh, and will be attacking the pathogens in the extracellular spaces. If you recall, antibodies are useful for um, attacking and defending in the extracellular spaces. So the uh, other branch of the adaptive immune defenses is cell-mediated immunity. And this is going to involve T cells or T lymphocytes. And they're going to use a receptor on their surface called the T cell receptor then they're going to use it to recognize pathogens. So how are T-cell receptors going to work? Uh, where are they going to look for pathogens? And what's interesting is they can look inside a cell. How can a protein on the surface of a cell look inside another cell? Well, it's going to involve a process called antigen processing and presentation. So here's a cell, and if there's a pathogen inside that cell, usually we talk about things like a virus, for example, the virus produces proteins, um, and those proteins will be processed inside of a cell and put on molecules that present it to the T cell. So we're going to see proteins, cellular proteins, uh, that are involved in taking bits and pieces of a pathogen and putting it on the surface. And in that way, in that manner, T cells will be able to look inside a cell because a cell will present antigen to the T cell. So we'll learn about the process of antigen processing and presentation. And in this manner, T cells can be activated. And when a T cell activates, depending on the type of T cell, it can either kill the infected cell or it can boost the immune response. So uh, when we learn about all immune system defenses, we usually talk about these three themes recognition, the immune system has to recognize something doesn't belong in the body. Second, effector function. Once it's recognized that something doesn't belong, the effector function will help clear the infection. And also, uh, third, communication. If a pathogen is recognized, then maybe we call for help. We activate other immune defenses. So we're going to see these again with T cells. We covered these themes in innate immune defenses, in humoral immunity, We'll cover, that, cover them again in cell-mediated immunity. So let's talk about the T cell. So a T cell or a T lymphocyte is going to have molecules on its surface that are going to be able to bind many different types of pathogens in the, in the respect of binding the molecules that pathogens make, which we will call antigens. How does the T cell recognize a pathogen? It's going to use the T cell receptor. And this is a protein complex found on the surface of T cells. If it includes many proteins, the main proteins in the T cell receptor that we spend most time talking about are the alpha protein and the beta protein. So the T cell receptor uh, proteins, alpha and beta, are going to be very similar to the heavy and light chain proteins of immunoglobulins or antibodies. And if you recall, for heavy and light chain proteins, there was a variable region and a constant region. Same thing is going to occur in the T cell receptor alpha and beta proteins. Their uh, um, 
the part that sticks out of the cell is going to have a variable region. And so it's going to have an interesting three-dimensional shape. And we'll see how variable regions are created, very similar to the variable regions of heavy and light chain proteins. There's going to be constant regions as well, and those constant regions will anchor the protein in the plasma membrane. So T cells will be generated in the body, and each T cell will have a unique variable region in its alpha chain, unique variable region in the beta chain, and that will allow T cells to have a unique and specific antigen binding site, such that each T cell with its unique antigen binding site will have such a three-dimensional structure that it could bind and interact with a very specific antigen, which it has never seen before. So these uh, T cells are going to be naive when they are released from the thymus and activate in lymph nodes. And T cells will circulate throughout the body looking for antigens to bind that fit their antigen binding sites. Where are we going to find antigens for T cells? We're going to find them presented on the surface of cells. So we have to use this concept of antigen presenting cells. Cells will present antigen to T cells such that a T cell is going to basically look inside the cell. We're going to sample the proteins inside the cell. So most cells in the body can perform this process of antigen presentation. The one we talk most about in terms of antigen presentation is a cell called the dendritic cell. Dendritic cells are phagocytes. They will perform phagocytosis and take pathogens in that way. They can also become infected by pathogens when we talk about viruses for a particular. So dendritic cells love getting infected. They love phagocytosing. And when they get pathogens inside themselves, they will present these pathogens to T cells. So uh, the dendritic cells, uh, we haven't talked about them a lot before, but we are going to spend a lot of time talking about them now. You can review uh, in chapter one in your book uh, a little bit about dendritic cells. Uh, where are you going to find them in the body? You find them everywhere. You find them in your tissues, and you find them in lymph nodes. And the thing about dendritic cells is, yes, they're phagocytes, and they live in tissues and lymph nodes. They can travel. They are migratory. So dendritic cells can capture a pathogen in your tissues, and then the, can carry that pathogen into your lymph nodes. And that's where naive T cells will circulate and look for um, active, uh, the ability to activate by recognizing a pathogen. So if this is an antigen presenting cell, for example, a dendritic cell, there are proteins inside the cell. Those are your proteins, they're self proteins. But there also might be non-self proteins, proteins that came from a pathogen that infected the cell or was phagocytosed by the cell. So we will see um, that pathogens um, that uh, are inside a cell or even the cell's proteins themselves can be processed and loaded onto proteins called antigen presentation proteins. And these have names such as MHC class 1 and MHC class 2. Again, this is an introductory review video. We will go into great detail in later videos on these processes of antigen processing and presentation. But suffice it to say, we will see T cells checking the peptides loaded on MHC molecules to see if they can recognize any of these peptides, if any of these peptides match the antigen binding site of the T cell receptor. And if a T cell recognizes an antigen that is presented on the surface of a T cell, then the T cell will activate. So T cells will use their T cell receptors to check for binding, strong binding and interaction um, with these peptides that are presented on the surface of cells. And if a T cell binds strongly, then that T cell will activate. So again, introductory video, we will go into great detail into all these processes. What happens when a T cell activates? Well, it depends on what T cell you're talking about. There are many types of T cells. The one we talk about um, that many people know are cytotoxic T cells, also known as CD8 positive T cells. When you see uh, the term positive, CD8 positive, what that means is that the protein complex, CD8, the protein complex, and if it's a cell is positive for CD8, that means CD8 is found on or in that cell. In this case, CD8 
is a protein complex found on the surface of cells. So cytotoxic T cells are CD8 positive. So yes, we have the T cell receptor. We also have the CD8 protein on the surface. And what CD8 cytotoxic T cells do once they activate is they wander the body checking for antigen that they recognize. And so here are four cells, two of them not infected. They just have self proteins in there. They're blue. Two other cells, they're infected by a pathogen. They're making this non-self protein. It, it's in red. And it turns out that this T cell receptor, well, it doesn't recognize self proteins, thankfully, but it does recognize this non-self peptide. And when a cytotoxic T cell recognizes a cell using its T cell receptor, we will see that cytotoxic T cells unleash fury and destroy and kill the cell and everything in it. So these T cells will kill your infected cells. And these T cells will go to the next cell, check it, it's also infected, it will kill that cell as well. So cytotoxic T cells um, kill infected cells. Typically we're talking about virally infected cells. And we'll go into the mechanism of how a T cell can kill a virally infected cell. So those are CD8 cells. There are also CD4 positive T cells. So a CD4 positive T cell is going to have a protein on its surface called CD4. It's a T cell, so it has a T cell receptor on its surface. And these cells will wander the body looking at antigens presented by very specific types of cells, dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. CD4 positive cells are also known as helper T cells because they don't typically do a lot of killing, they do a lot of helping by releasing cytokines. So we will see CD4 positive T cells when they are looking at cells that are presenting antigen, and these are the three types of cells that present antigen, in this case, the CD4 positive T cells, um, these cells will present antigen, and if the T cell receptor binds the antigen, then this T cell, it's not gonna kill, it's going to release cytokines. It's going to uh, activate other immune cells and be responsible for cell-to-cell -cell communication. So this helper T cell will send lots of cytokines out and will trigger the activation of many different types of T cells. And we'll go into detail about that later. The last thing I wanna mention about helper T cells is that there are many different types. So we will learn types such as Th1, Th2, T follicular helper, TH17, and T reg cells. These are all CD4 positive T cells. And when they recognize an infection, they will uh, help the immune system each in their own way, depending on what is needed or required. Uh, lastly, let's talk about all the topics we're gonna cover in unit three. First, we will cover uh, the process of T cell receptors how they're generated, and how a T-cell could recognize an antigen. This is going to require us to learn about antigen processing and presentation, so we'll spend a lot of time talking about the MHC molecules. Then we're going to learn about T-cell development, how do T-cells develop in the thymus, and how do we screen out self-reactive T-cells and ensure that our T-cell receptors are good and match our MHCs. So that's going to be a whole chapter of T-cell development. Then we'll see uh, how T cells wandering the body, naive T cells, how they can become activated. Once they are activated, then they're gonna need to have some effector function. So how do T cells help uh, remove pathogens from the body? So we'll learn about how cytotoxic T cells kill and how helper T cells release cytokines and trigger um, assistance from other parts of the immune system. And then finally, we'll end this unit talking about immunodeficiencies of T cells. If you're missing some aspect of T cell proteins or genes, then you're going to have deficiencies in your cell mediated immunity. And then we'll end with how pathogens can evade the uh, T cell response. So some pathogens have evolved mechanisms to interfere with T cells. So this is going to be unit three, cell mediated immunity, all focused on T cells.